everyone. Just want to do a quick review of resistivity, uh, which we've already studied in class. So uh, just imagine we have a wire. There's the wire here, and we want to send electrons through. We want to send a current through this wire. Now the problem is that this material will resist the flow of electrons. Some resist it a lot, some resist it a little. That is known as the resistance. Now the resistance depends on three things. The first is the length. Let's imagine we have two wires. Let's imagine we have a short wire, and we have one that's maybe, let's say, about double the length. Which one is it easier to send the electrons through? Clearly, it's easier to send it through the shorter one. And of course, the longer one will have a higher resistance. It also depends on the cross-sectional area. So imagine we have a very thin wire like this, right? And then we have a very thick wire like this. Which one's it easy to send electrons through? Clearly, this one will have the lower resistance. So the bigger the cross-sectional area, the lower the resistance is. And finally, clearly, it depends on the material itself. We know that things like gold and copper and silver are metals that are very easy to send electrons through. They allow for current. That's why we wire our homes with copper. On the other hand, we'd never think of wiring our homes with, say, glass or plastic or anything like that. Those are insulators. So the equation for resistance are, uh, is very simple. The resistance of this wire depends on these three things, the length, the cross-sectional area, and the material. And it's very simple. The material is the Greek letter rho times L over A, where rho is called the resistivity. It's not resistance, it's a resistivity. And that is measured in ohms times meters. You can find this value on your reference table unless they ask you to calculate it out. Length is very clear. How long the wire is, that's in meters, right? And the cross-sectional area here is in meters squared. And of course, we've already learned about resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms. So let's do a few sample problems. Here we have an aluminum wire of length one meter, which has a resistance of nine times 10 to the minus three ohms. If the wire were cut into two equal lengths, each length would have a resistance of, and they give you four choices here. So let's look at the equation. We know that resistance equals rho L over A. Now the wire is aluminum, which means the rho, the resistivity, is not going to change as we figure out how this problem works. What we are changing is the length. We're cutting it in half. We're going from one meter to 0.5 meters. And in doing so, we're effectively multiplying the top by 0.5. Well, since we have an equal sign here, whatever we do to the right side, we must also do to the left side. So if we multiply this side by 0.5, you know, we cut it in half, we must cut this side in half also. We're going to multiply this side by 0.5. And that basically means we just take whatever resistance was given us and we cut it in half. So we had 9.0 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms, and we're going to cut it in half. And that will give us an answer of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms. That is choice number two. Here's one for you to try. A tungsten wire has a resistance of R at 20 degrees C. A second tungsten wire at 20 degrees C has twice the length and half the cross-sectional area of the first wire. In terms of R, the resistance of the second wire is which of these four choices? Now keep in mind, you're doubling the length and you're having the cross-section. So which one do you think is correct? Why don't you choose now? So basically, in this problem, in the before situation, which we'll call situation one, we had a wire that looks something like this. Say. But then, according to the directions, it says that the second wire has twice the length but half the cross-section. That means it's thinner and much longer. And we know a thinner wire has high resistance, as does a longer wire. So if we look at the equation, resistance equals rho L over A, let's see what we're going to do here. According to this, we're going to double the length. That means we're going to have 
two times the length here, and we're also cutting the cross section in half. So we're going to divide by a half. Now, kids would automatically look at this and go, oh, two divided by two, that cancels out and it's just one, but that's not correct. Because we're taking two and saying how many times does a half go into it? So imagine we have two units like this, one, two, and we want to know how many times these halves go into two. Well, if you look at it, it goes in one, two, three, four times. So really, the answer is 4R. And if you don't remember from math, basically when you have a number over a fraction, you multiply the bottom number to the top. So you take 2 times 2, and you get 4 times the amount, or 4R, because 4 halves go into 2. 4R is the answer. Let's take a look at another one. Compared to the resistivity of a 0.4 meter length of 1 millimeter diameter copper wire at 0 degrees C, the resistivity of a 0.8 meter length of 1 millimeter diameter copper at 0 degrees C is what? And of course, you have four choices here. So why don't you put in what your answer is for this question? This is a bit of a trick question. Because it doesn't ask about resistance, it asks about resistivity. And if you look, you have a chart of resistivities. Now these are all measured at 20 degrees C, while these are both measured at zero. At the same temperature, the resistivity of the material is constant. So let's just assume this is 20 degrees. You'd see that copper, the resistivity is 1.72 times 10 to minus 8. At zero, it's going to be a little bit different, but the value will not change by changing the length. Basically, it's not asking about resistance, it's asking about resistivity. It doesn't change for the material at a given temperature. So the answer is the same. So we'll do two more problems. Copper is a metal commonly used for electrical wiring in houses. Which metal conducts electricity better than copper at 20 degrees C? Well, we know the equation is that resistance equals rho L over A. Well, the one that will conduct better will have a lower resistance. You don't want something in your house that has high resistance, then it's hard to send the current through. We want something with a low resistance, which means we want something with a very low resistivity. And they tell you it has to be better than copper. Well, copper, according to the reference table, is 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8 ohms meters. So we need a value less than 1.72. And the only one on this list that's less than that is silver, which is 1.59 times 10 to the minus 8. So therefore, the answer is silver. And now for our last sample problem. During a laboratory experiment, a student finds that at 20 degrees Celsius, a 6 meter length of copper wire has a resistance of 1.3 ohms. The cross-sectional area of this wire is, and they give you again four choices. Now the fact that it says 20 degrees C is giving you a hint to look at this chart on your reference table. And of course we know it is copper. So we can write down that the resistivity rho is 1.72 times 10 to minus 8 ohms times meters. And what else do we know from the problem? We know that the length is 6.0 meters. And finally we know that the resistance is 1.3 ohms. What you want to solve for is the cross-sectional area. So the question mark is, what is the area? So we'll use resistance equals rho L over A. And plug in our values. R is 1.3 ohms. The resistivity is 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8 ohms times meters. We're going to multiply that by the length, which is 6.0 meters. And the only thing we don't have is the cross-sectional area, A. So we're going to solve for A, plug and chug it into our calculator, and you will get an answer that is 7.9 times 10 to the minus 8. Of course, the units on area has to be squared, so it's going to be meters squared. So now we look up and we see if there's a value that looks like that, and in fact, it is the first one. So the answer is number one. So I do want you to keep a few things in mind as you do these problems. First, it kind of goes against common sense, but the hotter something gets, 
the higher the resistance is, the harder it is to send electrons through. So for example, you may recall in Ohm's law, which says that the resistance is equal to voltage divided by current, we know that if we plot voltage here and current here, voltage or electric potential here, it will plot as a straight line. Okay, the higher the voltage, the greater the current. But as the object begins to heat up, it will no longer follow Ohm's law. And that's because it becomes harder to push electrons through. So what will happen is it starts to curve. Here is where it starts to heat up. As it heats up, it takes more and more voltage to produce an increase in current. So keep in mind, the hotter it gets, the higher the resistance. Hotter temp equals higher resistance. Also, as you're doing these problems, keep in mind Ohm's law in this equation. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. This is actually quite important for problem number seven. It asks you to calculate the resistance and they give you a length. So kids automatically start using the resistivity equation that looks like this, but that's not correct. You want to use Ohm's law for problem number seven. Another one that kids have problems with is number nine. So let me see if I can explain this one. You have two wires. One is copper and the other one is silver. Uh, and what they tell you is that they are both the same exact cross-sectional area. But the silver is one meter in length, and then the copper is an unknown length. We don't know what that is. But they do tell you that they have the same exact resistance R. So we can use the equation R equals rho L over A to solve this. And what you have to realize is that this equation is the same. They have the same exact resistance. So we can set rho L over A for copper equal to rho L over A for silver. So we can say rho L over A for the copper Cu is equal to rho L over A for the silver Ag, right? But they have the same exact cross-sectional area. So we can cross out the cross-sectional areas. And therefore, we can say that the resistivity rho of the copper times the length of the copper equals the resistivity of the silver Ag times one meter. So that's just times one. So you go to your reference table, you look up the resistivities of copper and silver, plug those in, and you can solve for the length of the copper wire. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm.